Hey guys, welcome back to Seablock Rustic Waters. Last episode we started our agriculture stuff here and I've been working a bit on the crops and also trying to kind of just build something up here, you know, decorate a little bit. Um, I think I want to make this look like a garden area or something, so I was trying to build this thing here. I already forgot the name what that's called. <laughs> I always forget, something was an A, but kind of like these like wooden uh, arcs or something, or arches that have like leaves and stuff on it. It looks all right. I, I was just messing with the stuff. I was trying to put like leaves on the back of these, but oh, sorry, vines, but apparently they don't stick to trapdoors. So yeah, just a little bit of decoration as well while I'm doing stuff. You can see things have been shifted around a bit and I'm currently trying to grow the um, uh, hemp seeds as well. They're currently at 10, 10, 3, so only strength needs to get up, but it doesn't want to grow. Sometimes it takes a while, but I have uh, grown some of the other seeds. Where are the ones I've done? Yeah, this here is the crate that has the 10, 10, 10 seeds. So these up here are done. So we have carrots, seed, potato, beetroot, and melon. And I was looking at kind of what crops make these assorted farm goods, because these are the things we'll need for, you know, selling and shipping and that kind of stuff. So, and I do want to check this out. It, do it doesn't seem profitable currently, because you need like 150 of these to get 10 gil. But maybe once it, once it's automated and stuff, it's it's like a nice income, and we can always make a bigger farm. Uh, but there, you know, there is a little bit of an issue usually where making these, you need like you know nine types of like fruit, right, uh, or something. Is it always fruit? I forgot. I think it has to be fruit. And so, if we use the apples for example, it actually makes the apple block. If I use potatoes, it makes like a compressed potato block. Like none of these worked except for beetroot. Beetroot seems to be one of the only ones where you can just have nine of them in a grid to actually get that specific item. The other ones always seem to give me something different, which is not great. So I think we're going to stick with beetroot for making these. So we should set up like a big uh, beetroot farm somewhere. And luckily we do have the uh, seeds for that. So we can actually just take one. And here's a little, little tip, I guess, while I was working on this. While I was trying to get my crops to grow, let's actually see if this finished over here, because that would be a perfect example. It did not. Uh, but so, for example, something I've done is, you know, normally, let's say you just crossbreed something. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I changed it to like this cross here. So it has like four parents. That means the middle one actually has a chance to get even more stats uh, to, uh, you know, when, when it grows. So it's a little bit faster, maybe, although sometimes, you know, it can still take a while to uh do that are we out of water as well that's probably one of the reasons why it's slow but yeah that's one of the ways to increase it and i also mentioned it before that once you have a 10 10 10 you could try to cross it with something else to get a higher stat doesn't seem to work um i mean if it's something you can cross speed like a uh, cross breed like something that gives you something new then possibly but if you just try to like increase the stats it won't do it unfortunately so yeah, that doesn't work. But uh, something else that works is so usually let's say this is like not a 10, 10, 10, but you know, like 10, 8, 8 or something. It's like almost done. What I've done is, you know, to to get my four other seeds. So you could do this, right? Like I grow these up, right? To maturity. And then you use these clippers, right? To get these little um, clippings, right? And if the, I think it's the, if the strength is not super high, there's only a chance that you plant a seed if you right-click on a crop stick with this, right? But here's a little simple trick to do something much better. Just go over to your seed analyzer, put these in here, and it automatically turns them into seeds. It's a little bit of a weird thing, but now you don't have clippings, now you have actual seeds with the same stats, and they always 100% get planted. So you don't have to, like, get a bunch of clippings and be lucky to plant them. Just get the, you know, just convert them back into seeds and then... Then you're just fine. So yeah, so I'll get, uh, I need five more so I can just go over here, you know, dump them in there. And it doesn't matter if they're analyzed or not, it will just convert them. And I can plant these guys here as well. So we have a full field of uh, beetroot that we now can grow. And each of one of them gives like, I don't know, like seven or more pair crops. So it's quite a bit that you get out of it once they're at gross 10. And then we can use an automated user, for example, to uh, harvest these. So if I like place this guy here, you know, we can set up the preview. This currently would only do this guy. If he says it's three by three, it will now harvest this one. And we don't need to have this run every single tick. So let's just do it to 200 for now. 
So every time one of these grows, this guy will pick one of them. It, it, it looks like this one isn't covered, but it's actually like a hollow cube. I think this will still get um, harvested. So yeah, we can do that. But let's leave that off for now. And I'll probably have to place this somewhere else later anyway. And what I also should do is reset up my water pump. I did actually make a, a cumulus, uh, uh, what's it called? Aqueous accumulator off camera that I'm using downstairs in the area, but we definitely want to like have the water going here again. We don't technically need these two. We just need to hook up the, the water pipe again somewhere. I think I'll just place it here for now. I took it out so I can build my base up a little bit or, you know, this spot at least, but uh, I'm just gonna put this here again. Oh, and by the way, this guy, right, it auto outputs uh, liquid into into liquid containers next to it. You don't need to use a fluid a fluid extractor on this guy because um, it will just push the water into the pipes and then and then that works as well. So if I turn this on, this you can see it's actually getting water because uh, you know it just pushes it into the pipe and not there. So no fluid extractor needed, which is very nice. Let's turn this guy off here. Preview. And have a nap. All right, so while that is growing, also something over here. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, you know, this here is our center where we come out of. This is going to go away, uh, away eventually. There's going to be the water tower somewhere along this line, probably. I think I have a bigger space here for like a building where we can have machines or, you know, like chests, storage, whatever. And then there's a line of uh, crops that we can grow here. And these like little three by threes is what I want to go for. And I think we'll just grow every... Did that squid just like jump out of the water? <laughs> uh, yeah, unless they're falling from the sky. But I guess they're very jumpy squids today. Um, you know, or put some other crops here. But uh, And then I'll have like another like line here. This is going to be more like a pass where we can do some decorations or something. We have so much space up here. There's no need for us to like build everything in a really cramped place. So something I would like to do... Actually, no. Put this... On top of a block, maybe. Oh, uh, grass doesn't matter. Let's do it like here. Not sure if that's gonna look good. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out. Just want some decorative stuff, you know? Where to get that tree, uh, tree to grow? Why are you not growing? Come on, tree. Really? Are you not growing up here? Oh, because we're so high up. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, so we might have to be down here. That's right, we don't have a lot of building space. Okay, that still works though. Mm, the problem, of course, now is that I can't get through here if it's a tiny tree, right? Okay. Well, maybe I'll leave one for now. And I think I was gonna put like trapdoors around it for decoration. Do I even still have some? I don't think I do. Around here for decoration, but I think we can actually leave it. Just a bit of, you know, decoration here and there, and we can. Put some grass around there eventually, but I think I'll work on this a bit off camera. So these are already grown. You can see they grow really fast, uh, especially with the water going, right? And we'll definitely need like more of these eventually, right? But let's turn this guy on again, and we should see that after those 200 ticks, which is 10 seconds. Uh, there we go. Boop. Oh, it does one only. Okay. Then I guess we want to like lower this a little bit. Let's do like, let's do like every two seconds or every second for now, I guess. Because, you know, once once they all harvest that, it's not going to take... We don't need to right-click right, right, right -click it all that often. <laughs> it's trying to get the things to me, but it's like a... Because it's like a block lower, it can't, <laughs> can't move them up. Oh, so wait, you do it randomly? And so sometimes he doesn't right-click these? Oh. So if it's... Oh, okay, maybe we do have to have it on a lower... Take, ah, I don't want it too low though, because, you know, lag and such. Maybe 20 is fine, we'll see. Anyway, and we got over a stack out of these already, right? So over a stack of these would give us, okay, uh, seven of these. So you can see it's going to take quite a bit to get enough of these. But I mean, if this runs uh, the whole time, we have multiple of these or just a bigger field. I mean, we can set up one big field somewhere else that's just for harvesting these. How big can we make this? Quite big, right? So 19 by 19 is the highest we could do. That's quite large. So we should get enough stuff. But obviously we also have to like put these into compactors. If we look in the quest here again, and uh, shipping, was it uh, producing? Nope, nope, nope. Shipping and handling. We need the compact storage or the compactor, right? 
And we looked at this and this seemed to require power. So I think it's time we kind of look into power production uh, because it would just help us in the long run in for a lot of things, right? Like even up here with the uh, making the stamp or the metal press would be amazing. So we can save on some resources. And so from looking at this, this one already completed before because we've made one of these. There's two options, right? We can go down with, we have this like special ember energy generator, which I think we should check out just to see how much power, I mean, it says how much power, but um, kind of curious how quickly it burns ember and so on. But we can also, of course, go with immersive engineering. And in fact, uh, is that gonna tell us here, I wanna? This seems to go down towards, you know, diesel power, which is quite a bit of power. It's really powerful, if you wanna say it like that. But I think that's a, that might even be overkill for what I want currently. So I'm just checking if there's any other question here that would lead into what I want. I don't think there is. Yeah, so I think what I want to do is probably just make like a windmill or something, you know? So if you look up um, windmill, the one from Immersive Engineering, uh, it might look pretty cool up here too. We should be able to place this because while it is a large thing, it because it's a tile entity, only the actual block in the center should count. The you know, little sprouts outside shouldn't matter, like if they stick out of the max height build limit. And it's pretty easy to make, right? So very easy to make. So let's go work on this a little bit because I'm kind of curious. And we'll check out the ember generator as well. Maybe today, maybe next time or something. But that is definitely something I would like to do. We do have some extra tree to wood. We just need like a couple more sticks, which we can make in here. We're no problem. I think I actually might have some still. Quite a few, yes. And then you make this in a normal crafting table for whatever reason. But hey, I'm okay with that. So that's eight per windmill, right? Just make eight for now. And then we combine this with a piece of iron, also just in a normal uh, crafting bench. There's a little bit of extra iron. We still have more. It's just I haven't moved this over here yet. Like we still have all of this up there. And it, like thousands of ore dusts over there that we can process. So there's our little windmill, which is cool. And I don't, I don't think there is a quest. I mean, maybe there's one hidden, I'm not sure, but let's just ignore the quest book for now and do this. Now to make this actually fast and work properly, we also need windmill sails. Now these are a little bit expensive because it does require the hemp. And that's why I'm kind of trying to get the 10, 10, 10 seeds because then we get a ton of hemp. And we also need a, what's the thing called again? That guy here, the kinetic dynamo. Pretty easy to make, just a copper coil. Do we have a copper coil still? We have one, perfect. And then we need uh, just three iron and two redstone. And it's also the default recipe. Oh, I put away my iron. Default recipe, so there we go. So that will power the, or the windmill will power this guy, I should say, rather. So that's cool. And then we also need like cables and such, right? So it's gonna be low. Uh, voltage, so we need LV wire connectors, which is terracotta LV wire coils, and then the relays as well, which apparently you make in this crafting table or in this one. Uh, is this a leftover? Feel like that might be a leftover because this is the original recipe, unless that's like an extra recipe. I'll probably go with that one <laughs> while we have it. Let's go with that one, uh, but we also need to melt down a bunch of clay which is fine just do uh, let's just go grab a stack or something we have so much down here so much down here and just grab uh, let's do two stacks and just melt us up like we're swimming in clay it's ridiculous how much clay we have and i'm gonna take out the little coal for now oops and do it like this all right let me go cook this up and i'll make this stuff off camera here oh yeah never let your crops like out of sight because that could have been bad if we got the um the wheat to grow there and destroy all of our crops so i need to make sure i watch them a little bit all right so we should have a couple of cables here not too many and i made a bunch of these because it's you know cheap to make if you do it this way <laughs> they're just relays it's like whatever um and then these are a little bit more expensive though so we don't need too many for now i think i'll just make two uh, let's make maybe four in case we want to power more things. So we have that as well, which is nice. And there's still 
uh, some being processed. So we have these and we have our cables to connect them. And I do have a bit more copper coils or wires as well. Uh, oh, hey, there's even some in here I didn't see. Perfect. Do we have any in here for s or LV? Nope. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I, I kind of don't want to make too many because currently making a copper blade costs two ingots, whereas once we get the metal press, we can get two wires directly with one ingot, right? So it's quite a bit cheaper. Uh, but there's that. So we should have everything here. Now we need that hemp. We don't have the hemp yet. So for now, let's remove this. Work on the uh, compact something. This guy, right? Compactor. So we should have the things for this. Man, my inventory is a mess. Always so much stuff in there. You know, just working on all kinds of things at the same time. Okay, we still have these things, which is nice. I think I'm just going to make one compactor for now. Uh, I said before I should always make stuff in bulk, but I don't... Oh, that's silver gear. I don't see myself getting or needing a lot of this stuff yet. It's not in here. Is it in here? It's not. It might, might be. It might just be a different tool. Let's just do this. Or was it ingots? Silver gear. It is silver ingots. Hmm. I'm honestly tempted to use the setting for this mod pack where you can um, combine all these tables into one. Just to make it a bit easier on crafting, like, you know, there's no, I don't know, it's a little bit all over the place sometimes, but for now we'll leave it, we'll leave it. Uh, okay, so piston, more tempered glass, we do have pistons, because we made extras, we should have tempered glass, but it might be in here. And we have exactly two, how perfect. A wiring kit? I don't think I have one left, do I? No, I'm always low on these guys too. Uh, and then we need 12 lead plates and four of these metal fasteners, which I should still have. Possibly. Maybe not. We have the lead plates. Let's just grab 12. I think I should have them uh, in here. No, I don't. I guess I use them up too. All right, let me go get the rest and then we finish this. All right, made a couple more there. And then we only need four of these. And I think that might be it. But it also requires solder, right? Which... Uh, we have enough, apparently. Cool. Compactor. Ta-da. I said ta-da. <laughs> there it is. All right. Uh, let's go back up here. So this is done. You get two compacting drawers half. Very nice. These are pretty cool. If you don't know what they do, the compacting drawers, basically you can put in like, let's say, the silver ingot, and it will compact them into either a block or into the nuggets, and you can like, you know, grab the blocks instead of the ingots or something. So it's... It's cool to convert things uh, back and forth, and my pickaxe is almost gone too, which is not so cool. Okay, so we got that. Uh, what's the next one in here in this line? Oh, this is locked. Looking ahead required. And don't be greedy. Looking ahead. Let me see where that is. Huh, weirdly enough, I can't find it, so I don't know. I'm probably just blind. It must be somewhere in there, but... Doesn't seem like it's important for us currently because we can go into this one already, but this one is the might one, right? You may feel like shipping bins should sell for more than 10 gil each to villagers, but they know how efficient mob farms and agricultural setups can be. When you get a large automated uh, set of farms running, the gil will start pouring in. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping for that. Um, kind of curious about this. Another thing we should try, we did grab... Uh... Did we not grab? I thought I grabbed a embers guy. Maybe I didn't, because they drop archaic bricks, right? And you can actually use these to make the shipping crates too, weirdly enough. So I wonder if like setting up a mob farm with a bunch of their spawners would work too. And we have to get into the mob farm soon, but for now, that's okay. Another thing we should do is the, there was the charger here, energetic infuser. We should bring our, this thing and then uh, measurable, it like charges things really quickly because we could now also make like magnets and stuff if we wanted to. But let's put on my suit. I again forgot to check up here on my crops. Are you good still? You're good, you're not getting any wheat. But we're just gonna set up a windmill somewhere for now to see if it all works and then we we'll deal with this later. And oh, and I forgot to compact that because I want to try it out too, unless it's up here. Nope. 
All right, let's take uh, this one, I guess, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to, for now, set it up here. So I think we can do, let's do like this maybe. I'm gonna build outside for a little bit quickly. Uh, we put, oh, we put up this guy, All right? Our kinematic dynamo. And then break this one again, magnet this on. And I think we should be able to place this. There we go, look at this beautiful windmill. And because we're so high up in the sky, oh, this might need to go higher though. Uh, because we're so up high in the sky, this should be pretty pretty effective. Because it depends on like the height you're at. Um, and can't really get much higher than this. Actually, I think there's a limit at, after like 200 or something maybe. But, you know, it should be good. Now, it's not gonna do much. Again, do I need to be higher? Oops. I feel like that might be a problem if it touches the water. Let me go see if I can build as high as possible. Okay, so this is the build limit. We cannot build higher than this. There we go. It's not stuck in the water now. Let's go back down again. And yeah, it's spinning now. Cool. So you don't need the windmills, uh, the wind sails necessarily. Um, they will just speed it up by quite a bit. But, you know, it is possible to not do that. And then what we can do here is just put up our cell for now. Um... Shift clicking the middle turns them all off. You know, that's the off color. And I'm just going to the top one input, which is blue. And then whatever else we'll need. Let's just set the other ones to output maybe for now. You know, so only the input is there. And then we can do this. And actually, yeah, I'll put a relay in the center too. No, no we're just going to charge this right away. Let's maybe move this higher then. Should we bring my crescent hammer? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I did bring it. Uh, let's place it here for now. Okay, that's still active. And then we go do the connector and connect these up. And now we're getting power. Yes, fancy power. Again, not a ton, but totally good enough for what we need currently. Now, if you don't know how immersive engineering cabling works whatsoever, let me demonstrate you something. So you always have you have these um, connectors and the relays, right? The connectors are always an input or output, right? So I'm taking this as an output and I'm sending it in here as an input. If I tried to, let's say also here was a machine, right? Let's say I would try to power this and I right click with my cable here and then to this connector that already has a connection, it will complain because it cannot accept, these cannot accept more than one wire at a time. What you would need instead is a relay in between, right? The relay can have as many wires as you want. You can see it can connect it like this. And let's say there was one uh, below here. I can connect it to this, right? So there's two cables. So that way you can like bridge your your cables to different spots. And, you know, there can be multiple on these. I can attach even more. I could have another relay here and attach it to this relay, etc. right? But you couldn't do this because this one can only have one input or output or one cable at a time. So these are always the things you put in between. These are the ones you put at the end or beginning of your wires. And that was something I wanted to test. Uh, apparently we have the option enabled where wires hurt you. So don't walk into them, it hurts. There are isolate or insulated, uh, <laughs> isolated, They're like sad wires, insulated cables as well, but they require this tough fabric, you know, that, that we currently need for our uh, windmill and it's a little bit difficult to get currently once we have these super seeds over here ah, there's some wheat again get out of your wheat because these crops are such have such a low strength they're not really uh they're yeah, they're not really like spreading their currently they're getting a lot of weeds but yeah so so we can do that but for now that's good enough and i think what i'm gonna do is just to save myself a bit of space here let's just put the compactor below Obviously, none of this is going to stay. This looks odd that the front face isn't uh, like this. Hmm, weird. But the rest is textured. Interesting. But yeah, I just want this to have here so we can actually power something. This is not going to stay here. Don't you worry. And I'll put this guy next to it. See, this guy has a front face uh, with charges. And so we should also be able to actually... Uh, I don't think I have it on me. Now let's go downstairs real quick. I want to try something here. If we get our CMOS, we should be able to shift right click, take the battery out and charge this, right? 
yeah, it is going, I think it's going down. It is going down. Okay, this doesn't update it if I have the UI open. If you close and open it, it updates. Cool, yeah, so it's charging it. And there was the other upgrade that would make this charge faster, but we cannot install an upgrade until we get a uh, one of those conversion kits or upgrade kits, which is pretty cheap to make. It's just green color with paper and Inva. Super cheap to make, but I'm a lazy person. <laughs> So I'm gonna do it later. All right, cool. But we have this up there, and now I just want to see how does that even work. So we put these in here, and 15 of those make one of the. Oh, that needs a lot of power, huh? Well, no, 36. It's not quite a lot of power, and I think we're not making as much or as we're not making enough power currently with the setup. Do I have some hemp? We have like a tiny bit. We really need this thing to finish. Come on. <laughs> I need you to grow. Quicker, man. Quicker. I wish we had foreign cans or something. But there we, there we go. It's doing it, right? But like I said, we need 15 of these, which, may, which means 15 of those, right? Yeah. Which is actually 225 uh, of these guys. 225 of those guys. So that's uh, how many stacks is that? Four? Three stacks. A little bit more than three stacks, right? Yeah, 3.51 stacks to be precise, according to my calculator. So, that is a little bit. Um, It's not super slow yet. We can upgrade this, obviously. And so that should be good. So what I think I'm going to do is go downstairs again. While I'm working up here... We can just let this thing run and collect all of our stuff for the moment. I'm going to grab this guy. And I think that's all we need. I want to actually, I think a crate would, or a storage drawer would be nice to have. Because we want to automate this 100%, right? But uh, we don't have this, we have this one. But uh, I guess I could take this. Let's take this for now. I don't want to make another one currently. Can you tell that I'm really lazy in general? Okay, and yeah, I'm just gonna set this up. Uh, let's do it here and here. And then we leave this guy on, right? I'm gonna turn off my magnet for a second. Boink. So that's gonna get dragged into there and I'm just gonna turn you down. How oh, weird. Oh. It reset. Doop, 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 doop. <laughs> that looks funny. Okay, and I'm going to increase it again to a tick or a second. Cool. And obviously we can speed this up later too with more sprinklers, with the other sprinklers we had from Cyclic or Open Blocks or whatever it was from. I think it was Cyclic, right? No, it is Open Blocks. There's a Cyclic one too. Place over water and near crops. The water nearby crops increasing their growing speed. Multiple sprinklers in the same area do stack. Oh. You can also disable particles on it. <gasps> Dude, I want to try this one out. It says it needs water below, but it doesn't say if it consumes the water. Kind of curious about that. How are you doing? Still doing. Oh, it needs an aluminum bucket. Okay. Okay. So just for testing purposes, let's break this one here. Put a piece of water there. And how would you even... I guess against a block. Okay, it's spinning. Particle splash on. How do I, hmm, I don't see, oh. So, it, oh, oh, wow, it actually did, oh my god, that works really well. <laughs> Dude, that thing is amazing. Unless I'm like crazy, but that looked like they're growing already really fast. Oh, he's stealing all of my like special blocks here. Wait, is that gonna work on this too? I wonder if that speeds up the this grow, grows as well. Oh, there goes that block. Well, it's gone. Um, let's just leave the magnet on though, just in case. How about you? So it only like sprinkled sometimes. It's like poop. <laughs> okay, well we have two more. Let's uh let's try this here. Let's place two more. Now would flowing water work? I believe it does. This most this most splatters, right? Yeah. So if I turn this one off. Yeah, the other ones still work. 
Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to work on growing this one. It doesn't seem to affect it too much, to be honest. So, okay. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, let's try them over here, then. Just to make sure that... Oh, just see if that's going to speed up as well. So that would be amazing. And turn off my magnet. Yeah, that's definitely faster. Cool, these are amazing. I didn't know they existed. Okay. So far, they seem to be the best speed-wise. Huh. And we already have 326. So, yeah, honestly, I don't think it's going to take that long, you know? And we can... We do have a compact, our crafter, right? So we can just auto-feed this eventually. But let's just see how much that made. Just from this little time here. 41, right? So that's pretty good. Takes a while to auto craft or manually craft. Hmm. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna have to spend some time here setting these up a little bit, a little, little bit automatic. And like I said, we're gonna make this a much bigger farm if we go with these guys. And yeah, then we're gonna have to speed up these things too. And that should be good. I don't know. I think it's actually gonna be pretty good. So yeah. Awesome. But yeah, I think we're gonna have to end the episode here for today. There's our battery. Let's take it before I forget. Hope you guys enjoyed. And, oops, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. There we go.